Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation. The title of my talk is Hybrid Optimization Between Iterative and Network Update for Fast Quantity Sensitivity Mapping. So quantity sensitivity mapping is a biomarker to quantify the tissue sensitivity distribution. It's a very ill post inverse problem. So in this equation, uh, chi is the tissue sensitivity, uh, D is the spatial type for kernel, and N the measurement noise, and we get the magnetic field. So the, so the problem is to deconvolve the magnetic field to get the tissue sensitivity. So this image space um, dipole convolution equation can be written in K space, where we can get the fast free transform of sensitivity and then do this matrix multiplication in K space for fast computation. So the reason why this uh, dipole inversion problem is used is that if we look at the K space of this dipole kernel, there is a zero coin, and um, when we do this division uh, by zero, this, this introduces this uh, Euposmis for dipole diversion problem. So here is the typical sensibility, sensibility distribution of the brain. And after we convolve this dipole kernel, we get this magnetic field. The problem is how we can uh, do this dipole deconvolution process to, to solve the sensibility. So one of the prior work of dipole deconvolution using deep learning is called fidelity in post-network edit. So in, in our prior work, we print train a 3D unit as this dipole inver inversion network on healthy subject. So this healthy subject uh, was scanned using uh, a method called Cosmos. So this Cosmos has multi-orientation scan. Uh, this multi-orientation scan uh, can eliminate the oppositeness of dipole kernel and give us very high quality image as a labels for training. But, but uh, we can only get them in health center because uh, the scan time of custom is very long. And after we print train this um, uh, 3D unit that we inverse network, we, um, during test time, we propose to adapt the print train network weights on each test case using this boring fidelity loss. So this W is the noise stand deviation uh, matrix. And the reason why we do that is that we observe that there is some mismatch sometimes between the test case and training case, especially when the test case some, has some pathology uh, not seen during training. So by imposing this fidelity loss during test time, we can uh, correct and reduce this generation error. So there are several issues in fine um, as we can, as we observed. So first, this pathology related domain adaptation information is actually not inherent after each test case. So in, in banana fine, we need to fine tune the print train network weights on after uh, based on the print train weight for each individual case. So after each fine tuning, this fine tune weights was not inherited for the next uh, test case. So this is one downside. The second thing is we observe that there are a lot of redundancy in the network with change during the fine tuning step. So uh, we, when we do the fine tuning, we observe that uh, the high level weights in unit is, is not changing much. So that means we have a, a lot of redundancy uh, for this fine tuning using 3D unit. And the third uh, downside is that this network update leads to very slow update of the output sensibility because our final goal is to get this image space sensibility map and in, in vanilla fine, we can only update sensibility by update the network weights. So that's a very slow process. So to solve these issues, first of all, we propose a modified architecture as follows, uh, where uh, we have this 3D unit as a first stage uh, prediction. And after we get the uh, first sensibility chi zero, we concatenate uh, this chi zero with the input local field. And this concatenated maps uh, were fed into uh, a second network G to, ge to generate uh, the second step prediction chi one. So this second network is 
are smaller than the first one, and during fine tuning step, uh, only the update weights of second networks was updated uh, for each test case for fast adaptation. So equipped with this architecture, we propose a two steps pre-training. So first uh, step is that we, we, again, we use the Cosmos healthy subject labels for pre-training uh, to impose the stability chi zero and chi one to be similar to the ground truth. And then we apply this facility-based loss function not only on the healthy subject, but also on the patient data, because we want the network to see the pathology related patterns during brain training, but we don't have the labels on, on the patient. So, uh, so we do this um, um, facility-based unsupervised brain training. So after this two-step brain training, uh, we propose this hybrid optimization as follows. So first, let's rewrite the facility loss as this equation, where we have a splitting parameter alpha to, to, uh, to get these two terms uh, with this constraint where uh, we impose chi equals the, the second network output. And after that, we convert this loss function into augmented Lagrangian format. Afterwards, we use ADMM to, to, to optimize the, both the stability and Psi. So we're in, uh, in this ADMM iterations, uh, first we have this uh, image space update. So this update the image directly uh, with this network output as the regulation. So we call it DIL2. Uh, we use conjugate grid descent iterations to, up, to update this uh, stability maps with 200 iteration. And the second step in AVMM is that we update the network weights of second slimmer network. Here we have this ability loss and also uh, L2 regularized uh, uh, second term. <clears throat> and also we have this uh, due update of, the, of mu. So in our addition study, we first compare the, the network output uh, of this two-step print training with or without this um, input local field concatenation. And without this input field information, the, the value gradient contrast was lost. And in addition, the, the underestimation inside the ham rate was not recovered that well. Then we compared um, the uh, explicit network output regulation for image space iterative reconstruction, DIL2, and this vanilla file on the, uh, the print train network, second network G. And um, as can be seen that uh, the, the file on the second network uh, was better, um, has better image quality surrounding the hemorrhage with less shadow artifact. And uh, last, we, we um, compare different hyperparameters in uh, in the in this hybrid optimization step, so the interesting is if we set uh, this alpha equals zero, which means we don't have any fidelity loss during the second network output uh, uh, network update step in this ABM iteration, and after several other loop, the fidelity loss of the output stability uh, map uh, was exploding, and correspondingly the stability map has severe shadow artifacts around the hemorrhage. And uh, quantitatively, we, um, we see that uh, with our optimized parameters you know, in, in this hybrid optimization, we get uh, the best uh, quantitative result. And we apply the print train network uh, on, this, on this simulated data. So here we have several benchmarks to compare. So one is the, the MEDI. So MEDI is the total variation regularized iterative reconstruction. And QSM-NET, which is the, the first deep learning based uh, QSM reconstruction method. And QSM-NET Plus, uh, which augments the uh, print train, uh, the, the network, the train data set to have to cover a broader range of usability 
and fine, of course, and also the probabilistic diffusion inversion. And so in many, the, the shadow artifacts surrounding the hemorrhage and also the OLS issue uh, was quite uh, corrected. But uh, uh, many has a uh, issue of over smoothing of the overall suitability map. In, in QSMNet, you see this, this uh, shadow surrounding hemorrhage and also on the estimation because uh, we, we already see the, the network with, the network already see the healthy su subject during pre training. And QSMNet plus um, reduce this uh, shadow artifact and also this on the estimation to some degree, but uh, overall the image quality was not that good. And uh, for the remaining three methods, I think they give um, comparable result qualitatively. And uh, uh, for this quantitative comparison, uh, our proposed hybrid optimization gives the best result. And compared to FINE, which has the computational time on GPU almost 400, Second, the whole bit only takes about 12 seconds to generate the, the final result. And last, lastly, we, um, we uh, applied the method on, the, on this in vivo hemorrhage case where we don't have this ground truth. But um, when we compare the image quality, I think um, our proposed method gives very good reconstruction of the, the hemorrhage. Hey, thank you for your attention.